Awesome. Welcome again. Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. To Coffee Break. I'm Ayla Todd. Father, Father Tay. And we're glad that you're here to join us. So what's our topic for today? So today we're going to be talking about confession. We did a little preview, sneak peek, teaser mm -hmm. in the last episode. Correct. So today we're going to be talking about kind of like the fears and debunking them and kind of like the past history of like explaining, you know, why people are willing to receive Jesus and mm -hmm. then... There's like no lines for confession yep. versus like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. The lines for confession were astronomical. Correct. And nobody was willing to receive Jesus. So, Father Tay, why is that now? Oof. Good question. <laughs> it's going to put me in the hot seat yes. for controversy, right? So, um, it's really the history of how we view our faith, right? A lot of the beliefs stem from the Protestant faith. Right? From the belief that, you know, as Martin Luther uh, once wrote, we are a pile of dung covered with snow. Well, I'm being, being dead serious, mm -hmm. right? So back then, you know, like 50 years ago, right, um, that was heavily stressed. There was a lot of uh, heaven, hell, brimstone, fire kind of teaching, right? If if you don't do the, the will of God, then you, you're going to go to hell, right? Right. <laughs> right? And, and, uh, and you should be in a state of grace to receive... Mm -hmm. Holy Communion, right? And so the it, 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 and w the priests had the most beautiful intentions in their heart, which is, hey, help people to realize we have to be in a state of grace to receive Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, but however, many people felt that, that they were so unworthy, even though they've went to the confession and they are in a state of grace. They're like, we, we don't feel worthy enough to receive Jesus, right? So it's the over-inflation of feeling of being unworthy, so at the masses, sometimes these faithful people who've gone to confession may not go up to receive Jesus when it came time to receive the Most Holy Eucharist. Or um, people just felt like it was their duty to be there at the mass, but not necessarily to receive Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist, right? Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward, right? What's the main beliefs and, and, and tenets? I, I know this is an overgeneralization, but I want to say it as it is, right? We, we we're starting to adapt more the Protestant fuel, fuel, uh, sorry, view of a history of salvation, which is if I profess with my with my lips and my heart that Jesus has come to save me, then I'm saved, right? right? So there's there, there's that now swing way to the other <laughs> side, which is the overinflation of God's mercy and of His love, right? God's going to save everyone, right? right? Regardless of what I do. Right? So there's no more accountability. Like God's already saved me, so why do I need to try to achieve my salvation? Right? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, people are feeling that, you know, kind of like what discussed in the other video, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't it true, Father, that my sins are forgiven, especially venial sins at the um, you know, at the curia laso, the penitential, right? right. The beginning of the mass. So I don't need to go to confession. I I'm good to go, right? I'm cured. Life We're, is good. Right? And so that's that's also that misconception there. Mm -hmm. So right now is we have more people are afraid of what others are thinking. So they would rather line up to receive Jesus in the most holy Eucharist without even batting an eyelash. Mm -hmm. And there's so very few people who are going to confession, right? Because of course and then this leads leads us to the next topic, which is what are some of the fears and debunking some of the fears mm -hmm. that, that comes from that? Yeah. yeah, so speaking in like general terms, mm -hmm. uh, let's say I'm just like a random person going to sure. confession off the street. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been in a hot minute. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to remember any of my sins that I tell you? <laughs> no, this is the most insane part. Like, I've been in the more, I've been an ordained priest since. June 8th of 2018. So this is 2020, so four years now. Only four years? Yeah, yeah. It feels longer. <laughs> yeah. well, well, COVID made everything seem longer. <laughs> but the craziest part, though, as a priest, we don't remember. This is the greatest miracle and the greatest spiritual gift that's been given to all priests. Is when we hear confessions, we don't remember anything. Mm -hmm. We don't remember names. We don't remember what they look like, right? It's awesome. This is the seal of confessions. And like we don't even try. It's awesome. Like We go there and just blank, yeah. right? Because we're more concerned with helping people to receive Jesus' mercy mm -hmm. 
and for them to leave their sins behind and to start a new life. For us priests, that's more that's more important. Right. You know. And so, like, you've been to seminary. You've mm-hmm. done probably like mock reconciliations and everything. Correct. Correct. So there's probably no sin you haven't heard. Correct. Correct. So anything that we say in the confessional, it's not going to shock you. Correct. <laughs> correct. Yep. 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 I- as a priest, you, we see everything, even before hitting the confessional. So, like, it doesn't surprise us anymore. And, and I want people to know that, too. Like, mm-hmm. sin is old. It's old as dirt. There's nothing new <laughs> that you're presenting, right? right. And, and, like, uh, even for, for us priests, we go to each other for confessions, too, because we need confession. And all of us do. And confession helps us to make right our relationship with God. Oh, that's what we forgot to mention in the last video. <laughs> When, when sin enters the world, it breaks a lot of relationships. Our relationship with God and, and with Mother Church and with those around us. Mm-hmm. That's why when we sin, we can make up and justify as much as we can, but that guilt lingers. And everyone around us feels that, right? But when we go to confession, all that, all that is uh, obliterated, and we're made right with God, for first and foremost, and we're made right with Mother Church, the, mm-hmm. the whole universal Catholic Church. Right. And those around us. Mm-hmm. I know, I think, a while back when I was like 15 or 16, I did a tech retreat mm-hmm. a while back. Yeah. And they focused on um, the Paschal Mystery, so the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Um, yeah. And tech stands for Teens Encountering Christ, if you don't know. No. Um, but yeah, I was on that retreat, and it had been a while since I got into confession, and we were hitting really hard on... Um, you know, dying to yourself and dying to your sins and making mm-hmm. sure that, you know, yeah. you know the gravity of what is going on in your soul um, mm-hmm. when you sin. Mm-hmm. And so we were doing a night of reconciliation and adoration. And so I'm sitting in front of the Blessed Sacrament and mm-hmm. I'm just praying and I'm thinking, okay, it's been a minute since I've been to confession. So I think I should probably go. Mm-hmm. but I'm scared of, like, the priest judging me. Mm-hmm. He's going to go off and tell his other buddies. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. You know, I could get excommunicated for the things that I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's, like, little stuff. But yeah, I yeah. built it up in my head so much worse because we're our own worst critic. Correct. And so I finally get the courage to, like, go up and um, talk to the priest. And he's like, all right, you can start... Um, uh, what are your sins and everything? And I sit there in silence for maybe like 10 seconds, but it felt like 30 hours. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just yeah. sitting there. Yep, yep. <laughs> he gets to a point where I'm kind of just going like, well, uh, and uh, he just looks at me and he goes, I've been a priest for X amount of time. I forget how long he said. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you say that can shock me. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can tell me that I don't already know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that exists. You're not going to surprise me with new information. Mm-hmm. If you really want this sacrament, you can just tell me. Mm-hmm. And you can be clean. And you can like have this giant weight lifted off of your shoulders. Mm-hmm. And life will be so much easier for you. Correct. Well, <laughs> I was like, okay, this is what happened. Here's everything that <laughs> was going on. And I just poured splurge, my heart out to this man. Um, spewing at the mouth. <laughs> spewing at the mouth. It was like word vomit coming to um, recognize like all of the things I had done. Mm-hmm. And the priest in persona Christi, in the presence of Christ, mm-hmm. he absolved me of my sins. And he's like, okay, go pray three Hail Marys. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm sorry, did you not just hear what I said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go pray three Hail Marys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's nothing worse that I have to do. Like I have to like tell people about this. No, go pray three Hail Marys. You're absolved. Go. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think we make it a lot worse than <laughs> what correct. it actually is. Correct, correct, and, and and that's part of our training within the seminary too, right? It's the question is what does this soul in front of us need, mm-hmm. right? And so the soul in front of us needs what God's love and mercy, like like we all do. So we're not gonna lord it over you. No, no, no. Our job is to help you see uh, the particular sin and, 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 and the destruction that has done, but also to give you advice. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, try doing this or try thinking about this. You know, there's different things. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not the experts, but we just want to counsel you a little bit. Um, but then also to give you the most powerful prayer, the prayers of absolution. Right? Mm-hmm. Confession is the most powerful prayer. It cleanses everything. 
So bring it. And I'm serious. Mm -hmm. So like when you go to confession, right? Um, we'll, we'll talk more about in our following videos about it too. But bring everything. Mm -hmm. The attitudes behind the sin. The reason why you did the sin. And the sin is sin and of itself too mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, priests, we're not going to judge. Because our, our, our primary uh, thing that we've been trained is to listen with a good ear. Mm -hmm. um, and then to give counsel when needed, but most importantly, to give absolution. Mm -hmm. for, for the soul that's willing to repent, that's the most important thing. When you go to confession, are you willing to change, right? To change from your ways. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, pray. So like speaking on change and wanting to get away from the yeah. sins that I've committed, mm -hmm. if I come to confession and I tell you the same sin over and over and over again, mm -hmm. is that... <coughs> Does that mean something's wrong with me? <laughs> no, no, not at all. If you look at the writings of St. Paul, right? He says, I prayed three times to the angel of the Lord to remove this particular thorn from me. And, and what did God respond to, to St. Paul? My grace is sufficient for you, right? So you're not doing anything wrong. It's just that we built years of bad habit, which led to vices, which led to sin. Mm -hmm. And so by constantly going to conf uh, by going confession on, I would say like once a month is the best practice, but if you can go twice a month, even better, right? So just get into that practice. Um, so the more that you start to go to confession, the more you start to unpack it with Jesus, mm -hmm. slowly that sin will go away, right? But it takes that first initial step to admit that we are powerless, mm -hmm. that we need God's help. Then then can we see that new change within our hearts, mm -hmm. within our lives too as well. Yeah, good, great Thanks. question. And so speak... I talked a little bit about this uh, a few seconds ago in Persona mm -hmm. Christi. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, so this is the crazy part, right? This is the most telling part about becoming a priest. Whenever we are celebrating a sacrament, I am no longer Father Tate. This, it's, you know, I'm taking the place of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And every good priest should pray, be humble, be like, Lord, who am I to take up this reign, right? Mm -hmm. right? It's through no merits, you know, you know, of, you know, of, of, of my own. And so that's why, you know, we should be really humble because we are aiding in Jesus' mission to give uh, peace and mercy throughout the whole world, right? That, that's what, we're, that's what we, we're, we're called to do. This leads into the next great question, right? Why, why, why do I need to, to, go, to go to a priest? Yeah, why? For, for a <laughs> confession, right? Well, first of all, Jesus gives us that command to St. Peter, our first pope. Mm -hmm. He said, Peter, upon this rock, I'll build my church, right? He gives Peter the keys to heaven, first and foremost. Second, he is going to be the rock in which this church is built. Third, he says, you do this by what? Any sins that you retain on earth will be retained on earth. But any sins that you, um, any sins that are loosed uh, on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I mean, any sins that are forgiven on earth shall be forgiven in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus is already giving the power to uh, hear confessions, to forgive sins, right, uh, to St. Peter. If you look at all the scriptures, every time he heals someone, what does he say? Go and sin no more. Your faith has saved you. Your mm -hmm. sins are forgiven, right? He always says that, right? Because Jesus is forgiving them of their sins, first and foremost, followed by a physical healing. That's what confession brings to us. Mm -hmm. Why we need to go to the priest for confession. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's part of our human nature, right? We want to hear that our sins are forgiven. It's true that we could say that, that we could go to God, you know, that we could go to God and then say, I'm sorry for my sins, right? And mm -hmm. then he'll forgive us of our sins, right? But it goes much more than that. My analogy that I often use with the kids is think about this, mm -hmm. right? Think about you playing ball in your neighbor's backyard or like soccer, and also, you kick it too hard, and you bust the window, right? You go to your neighbors and say, hey, look, I'm sorry, sir, for breaking your window. And your neighbor is like, yeah. They say, don't worry about it. Your kids, you know, um, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you go home, you're happy. You're like, mom, dad, this is awesome. Like, I talked to this neighbor. I broke this window. I, we apologize, and we offered to pay. But the, but the neighbor said, you know, it's all right. We'll, we'll just take care of it, right? The next day, you go across his house. The window is still not fixed, and then the next, and the next day, right? This is what happens to us when we don't go to confession and, uh, and un unload all that to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. When we don't go to confession, we're always reminded of the sins that we've done, mm -hmm. right?
right? So we feel guilty. It's like us walking across the house. I'm like, sir, you promised that you would fix it. Fix it, right? <laughs> so when we go to when we go to the sacrament of confession, we're showing the whole world that we're willing to change. That we're humble enough to kneel in front of in front of a person who's acting in the person of Jesus Christ. To uh, so what you're doing is you're really whispering your sins to Jesus Himself and to receive absolution so that you can go back to church and worship with the community. Mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, when we go to confession, our relationship with God is repaired. Our relationship with Mother Church, Catholic Church, is also repaired. We go to confession because we need God's love and His mercy. Jesus wants it to be done that way, right? We have scriptural evidence of that. But also for us to hear the words of absolution and to have faith and know that my sins are forgiven, mm -hmm. right? And I don't have to question like, does God really forgive me or not? Right. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. these are all really great. And so, like, how do I start putting them into practice? Yes. Great question. <laughs> great question, right? Um, the, first, the, the first practice is not to view the confession as a place of judgment, but to receive his love and his mercy. My favorite story, quickly here, is the story of, of an Italian sculptor. He has a huge devotion to St. Padre Pio, mm -hmm. and he loves the sacrament of confession. So he asked the Lord, he said, how can I help others go to conf confession? And so he has this vision of St. Padre Pio teaching him how to sculpt this thing. It's beautiful. So it's a sculpture of St. Padre Pio bending his ear through the screen, the confessional screen, right? So it's Padre Pio sitting on one of the chairs, mm -hmm. and he's listening to the confession. On the other side of it is an empty chair, which represents all of us sinners coming to confession. And here's the crazy part. When you look through the screen on the side of the penitent coming in for confession, you no longer see Padre Pio's face. You see the bloody face of Jesus Christ. That's why we should go to confession. Wow. We're coming to Jesus. We're not coming for the priest. We always come to Jesus mm -hmm. through Mass to receive his body, his blood, but also through confession to receive his love and his mercy in the most true and concrete way that leaves no doubt anymore that my sins are truly forgiven. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should go to confession, to receive his love and his mercy. Agreed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah. So we, we hopefully, uh, we hope you enjoyed these segments of our videos. And uh, we encourage you, take it slow, right? Mm -hmm. right? Have a conversation with the priest. Ask God to give you the strength to come in. Like, Lord, I want your mercy. Help me to get over this hump of myself, right? And help me to, to confess my sins. And know that the Lord's waiting for you, right? He's waiting. He loves you. He wants you to receive his love and his mercy. Mm -hmm. But without further ado, we also have to make a plug all of our the work that we've been doing so far has been great gratefully especially our supply of coffee our supply of coffee by st james coffee house yes in rochester minnesota so if you're ever in the neighborhood check them out they're much highly, more highly recommend yes there's so much more than just a coffee house right they have a chapel on there which you're able to pray mm -hmm. and spend some time with jesus there's also different pilgrimages happening in connection with the coffee house the yeah. different things you can buy right it's a great place mm -hmm. to have an encounter with jesus we'll soon have merch there too i think we're getting stickers sweet that we're gonna sell there so yes go so pick up a coffee break sticker yes <laughs> and we're, we're hoping to, to expand that line and so uh and so yeah give them a shout out and then also we'll see you next time on coffee break see you later bye Sound.